Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm talking to you about the hottest comics releasing August 4th, 2021. But first, please be sure to subscribe, like the video, and comment down below what you're most excited for. I have a few really good picks this week, so it's tough for me to pick and choose which ones go where. So I'm going to dive right in, and I'm starting off with Geiger number 5. Woo, man, Geiger has slowly been creeping up my top 10 list. It right now is in my second position. I think Geiger is fantastic. I think it is so well written, beautifully drawn, and I just absolutely love the story. Uh, so it's written by Jeff Johns, drawn by Gary Frank, colored by Brad Anderson, and this one in particular is Allies or a Different Kind of Enemy. Geiger's quest to find sanctuary takes him deep inside a remnant of the old world and face to face with desperate survivors within. When a heart breaking discovery puts them at odds with Geiger, an ancient warrior is awakened with one mission, bring down Geiger, dead or alive. And I am so excited for this because Geiger is super badass, especially when he takes out his rods, he starts beating some ass, you know, it is just the coolest thing. I absolutely love it. I have been digging this comic a lot. Also, I have Lucky Devil number one. It is a new Dark Horse comic written by Colin Bunn and drawn by Fran Galan. And I personally love Colin Bunn. I think he does some great horror comics. And me personally, I love horror comics. I think horror comics have definitely been on the rise lately. And so I just want to let you know about this one because it definitely piqued my interest. So, a down on his luck schlub is possessed by malevolent demon. Just when he thinks things can't get worse, the exorcism goes wrong, and he finds that somehow he's retained all of the entity's supernatural gifts. After a path of revenge on the people that have wronged him, he begins to gather worshippers and form a cult. But the legions of hell don't take kindly to this, and they send demonic agents to murder the schlub turned god before he gains too much power. For fans of the Six Gun, Harrow County, and Lock and Key. So I, in particular, am very interested in this. At first, I thought the cover was like, wow, this looks a lot like Shadecraft with like the, the shadow following him. But as you dive more into it, it definitely is one of its own things. And that's what I like about Colin Bunn is whenever he writes something horror, it still maintains a classic cliche of a horror film but also he brings his own style his own you know story to it which I really enjoy we also have probably the one I am most excited for this week is me you love in the dark number one it is a brand new mini series by image comics written by the amazing the most talented Scotty Young and drawn by Jorge Corona who did Middle West with Scotty Young which I am a huge huge fan of and I cannot wait for this book. There's tons of store exclusives for this book as well but this one in particular there's the cover A and a 1 in 25 Scotty Young cover. So, so here we go. <laughs> Scotty Young and artist Jorge Corona follow up their critically acclaimed series Middle West with a brand new haunting tale. An artist named Roe retreats from the grind of the city to an old house in a small town to find solace and inspiration without realizing the muse within is not what she expected. Fans of Stephen King and Neil Gaiman will enjoy this beautiful, dark, and disturbing story of discovery, love, and terror. So I am super excited. I really like both of them a lot, and I'm excited to see where they can take this. Also, we have Nice House on the Lake, number three. Uh, it's it's building up. It, number one was surprising. Number two definitely built up even stronger. And number three, I have a feeling, is going to something big's going to happen. So Walter's rules for the getaway strongly suggested the residents not leave the property lines of the house. But how far do they go? It's not like Sam, the reporter, to leave a question like that unanswered. But what he finds when he walks the perimeter of the lake might turn out to be the story of his lifetime however much longer it is so this one has been piquing my interest a lot and I'm just so happy that James Tynan is allowed to do pretty much freely what he wants at DC Comics which is very interesting to me I mean they know that they have a superstar on their hands and if they allow him to do what he wants then that's what's gonna make them money and this is what's making them money because Nice House on the Lake is probably one of the highest selling DC Comics at my store so I personally really like this comic and really enjoy it, uh, so I am excited for number three. 
We also have Spirits of Vengeance Spirit Rider number one. And this one focuses mainly on Kushla. And Kushla is very interesting in my eyes. She's like no Ghost Rider you've ever seen. Kushla, a source of supreme, a spirit of vengeance, and the savior of Johnny Blaze's soul. Blaze has been through a lot lately, from ascending the throne of hell to nearly murdering his former allies on the Avengers, but his nightmare is far from over. Something or someone is haunting him, and only a ghost writer with the powers of a sorcerer supreme can find out why. The dynamic writing duo of Taboo of the Black Eyed Peas and B. Earl expand the writer mythos with an action-packed special that will kick off a brand new era of vengeance. Kushla is about to be the hottest thing in hell. And I just find her really interesting. She was in Doctor Strange and the Source of Supreme comic. And I th she was probably one of my favorite characters in there. So I'm glad she's definitely getting recognition for this comic. And hopefully she gets like her own series or she becomes popular in like the MCU or something. That would be really great. But the 1 in 25 of this comic is fire. I absolutely love it. Alright, now time for our series shoutouts. These are comics not necessarily my top picks, but I am super excited for them and I would love for you to check them out. So we're starting off my series shoutouts with Basilisk number 3. I've been really enjoying this Colin Bum Boom comic. I think it is drawn beautifully by Jonas Scarf and... Is there no end to the Chimera's reign of terror? Regan, a former member of the Chimera and her past victim, Hannah, continue the hunt for Regan's brethren, but the shared memories that haunt them both may put an end to their quest. Meanwhile, cornered, the other Chimeran have met their match, the state police. So, I've been liking how you get more and more answers of the Chimera. In number two, we just got introduced to a couple more people, which were very interesting. And I really like how this is coming along together. I think Boom knows that they have some talent on their hands, and it's a great comic. We also have Joker Presents a Puzzle Box, number one. It is a miniseries out of seven. It's written by Matthew Rosenberg, drawn by Jesus Marino and Joshua Hickson. And there's a really nice Chip Zdarsky cover A. Uh, so it's story time. The GCPD discover a mysterious corpse, a magical box, and a murderer's row of the city's most dangerous villains sitting in a jail cell. Now, all they need to figure out is what exactly happened. Fortunately, one suspect is willing to talk. Unfortunately, it's the Joker. Now, superstar writer Matthew Rosberg, magnificent artist Jesus Marino, and a multitude of rising star artists invite you to spend a night in the Gotham Central interrogation room for a dozen tales of murder, mayhem, and mystery as told by the clown prince of crime himself. Can you solve this puzzle before the sun comes up? And I love a good ho a ho mystery, horror mystery, thriller. I love the detective side of Batman. And this one really piqued my interest because I do really like Matthew Rosenberg. I think he is very cool and good at what he likes to write. So I'm hoping that he brings a lot of love and attention to this book because it does sound very interesting. Sounds kind of like, you know, interrogation with Joker, and will he lead you on to a lie? Will he tell you the truth? You never know. So, I'm very excited to see where this hack goes. We also have Trover Saves the Universe, and <laughs> this is a new number one, uh, written and drawn by Tess Stone, and it's for fans of Rick and Morty and Mega Man. It's a new limited series filled with mystery, murder, and mayhem from fan favorite author Tess Stone, set in a world of Rick and Morty creator Justin Rowland's hit video game series, Trover Saves the Universe. Welcome to the ICJ, Important Cosmic Jobs, where the boss rings employees at the end of each month, the worst employee literally gets the axe. It's not a great gig. But when ICJ's top eye hole monster mind winds up dead, company's most rival employees, Clover and Bo, are falsely accused of his murder and hunted by the space cops. Now they must clear their names and unravel a conspiracy that reaches the very top, that is, if they don't kill each other first. And I think this was just a fun one to put on here. I think, you know, if you really like Rick and Morty, you might really like Trover Saves the Universe. It is from the same creator, so I think it's just like a really fun one to have. I know more people are speculating on this one me personally i just think this is a f sounds like a fun comic so <laughs> uh we also have red room number three and if you've been reading this comic this comic's messed up um, i really enjoy it though and it's i feel like you read it and you're like man 
I liked this so much. What is wrong with me? Why did I like it so much? Um, so I personally really enjoy it. I think it's one of those comics where after you read it, you sit down and you think about it. What did I just read? Why did I read this? How did I read this? What just happened? You know? Um, so in that sense, Ed Piscor is doing a great job. I think he is writing this comic very intensely, and I think it's even getting to him a little bit, because at the end they were talking about it, how he's getting, like, super messed up in the head just thinking about this stuff constantly. Like, he's like, what did I do? Um, <laughs> but I think it's crazy cool. Um, so, Levy Turks was an encryption software prodigy serving a life sentence for creating an online drug empire until the feds proposed a deal infiltrate red rooms and help the FBI crack down on these deepest corners of the dark web. But Turks soon finds that prison might be a better fate. Another killer standalone issue of the all-new monthly series from the creator of Hip Hop Family Tree and X-Men Grand Designs, as seen on Pisker's YouTube channel sensation, cartoonist Kayfabe. So, <laughs> we will see how this turns out. And last but not least, we have Skybound X number 5. This is the Robert Kirkman at Ryan Otley comic that has been pretty big throughout. And this one I think is going to be the biggest one yet. Because this one in particular is going to not only conclude the Rick Grimes 2000 storyline, plus the new six sidekicks of Trigger Keaton and Gasolina stories, but also something completely new from Robert Kirkman and Jason Howard. So, I'm just saying, Robert Kirkman's known for coming out with big exclusive characters i mean like walking dead invincible things like that and like whoever this new character is could be that next big character he uses in a movie tv show or anything like that i'm not too sure who it is what it is um uh, but i cannot wait i am very excited and i hope this comic does really well now time for our late printings we have a couple of late printings this week we have Basilisk, number two, second print. God Killer Tomorrow's Ashes, number one, second print. Lotus, number one, second print. Shang-Chi, number one, second print. And number two, second print. So if you missed out on those Shang-Chi's, I know number two has a first appearance in there as well. We have Skybound X, number one, second print. And we have some of my favorite ones for the week. We have Stray Dogs, number one, fifth print. Stray Dogs number two, fourth print. Stray Dogs number three, fourth print. Stray Dogs number four, fourth print. And Stray Dogs number five, second print. That also comes with a one in ten movie homage of The Crow. And I really like these because I love movie homage covers. And I've been collecting all of these so far for, strange, for Stray Dogs. So I'm very excited for these. Some of these are really cool. And last but not least, we have Venom number 35, second print of that 200th issue. And that's going to be all for me this week. I hope you have a fantastic week. Be sure to start by your local comic book shop this Wednesday, August 4th, to check out all these comics and many more. Have a great day.